everybody. This time around, I want to show you guys a tutorial on how to trim down nail art brushes for nail art. And also some really important things to keep into consideration when you're prepping to do detailed nail art, hand painted nail art, stripes, lines, whatever. Um, my next lesson, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to actually master stripes and lines, whichever way you wanna call it. But in this video, it's really important that we understand the role that our tool plays in the success of doing lines and stripes. And so I wanted to go over some really important things. So I've got uh, three different brushes here. I have a brand new one that I'm going to trim down for you guys. Um, I have one that has been sitting for a while and also kind of got bashed up a little bit. Doesn't look like it, but I'll show you in a second what I mean. And then I've got one that for me is my perfect go-to. Um, it has a little bit of damage from some acetone here from it being exposed, but who cares? It doesn't matter. Just look at this part, okay? It's really important that you guys understand it does not matter, really, it doesn't matter if you start with a cheap, like, craft brush or if you use an expensive one. When you're starting out, the most important thing is to understand the fundamentals behind what are you looking for in a brush. And then you can get into different types of hair and, you know, the different crimps and all of that stuff. But for the sake of this lesson, I just want to kind of boil it down to the actual fundamentals behind a brush and how we can do what we need to do with it. Because I know a lot of you are probably either just getting started in this or you're not quite sure what to shop for. And I don't want you to go out and buy some $40 nail brush because it's, you know, if you don't know how to use it, you're not going to get the full value out of it. So let's just talk about brushes without talking about brands, price points, where to buy what I have. I just want to talk about what's important in looking for a brush. Okay. So let's start with the new one for a second. When you typically start with a new brush, hopefully it comes with some kind of protective cap. And this is just a detail brush, line brush. If you buy one at an art store, it'll usually be called a liner. And if you do go look for one at your local art store, try and find a zero or a double zero brush. Basically just means it's really teeny tiny. And this one is about a centimeter long. So on the camera, it might look really, really long, but this is about maybe a centimeter long from here where the, um, the tip of the actual metal is to the tip of the brush, okay? A couple of things to point out that I want to show you is this brush, although it may not look like it, is actually a little bit thicker than the one that I like to use. Can you guys see the difference? Especially look at if you look at the base of the brush, can you see how the base of this brush right down here is much more slim than the one on the left? The one on the left looks more like a triangle or it's got a little bit of a wider base and the one on the right is very, very thin and tapered. So this is why it's important for you to understand that yes, high quality brushes are expensive for a reason because the hair and everything and the longevity of the brush makes a difference. Um, also the glue and the crimping that they do down in here is very different. But if you're starting out and you just buy a zero, double zero art brush from your local art store, you can start with just a basic brush. So I wanna show you first lesson about this. I wanna show you how we're gonna trim down our brush so that we take what's on the left to get to what's on the right, okay? Now, when I first started doing this, I used to just snip away hairs on the side until I got the thickness I wanted, but what you end up creating with that is you end up creating a big flat shape. Hopefully you guys can see this really well. I'm working with teeny tiny brushes. So if you're gonna trim down a brush, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a pair of nippers and the sharper the better. I don't use the same nippers that I use on skin. I use a specific pair of nippers that I use for um, like cutting forms or trimming hairs or you know whatever I might need. I have kind of like a nail art pair of nippers that I use. Um, the reason being is because the ones that we use on skin, we wanna keep them extremely sharp. We don't wanna dent them or anything. So you wanna keep separate pairs of nippers. But what I'm gonna do if I want to actually trim this down is I'm going to very carefully, and this might actually have a teeny bit of glue on it. So you can see it's like really stiff. Usually new brushes when they come, they've got a little bit of like glue or some type of sealant on the actual bristles to keep it stiff and to keep the hairs from fraying. So you can see if I, if I just go like this, the, the hairs start to separate a little bit, okay? So if you're gonna trim down a brush, you wanna basically grab just a few hairs, like one or two from the outside and just nip them away. 
okay? So you can see I removed like one little hair. As tight to the base, the base down here, this metal, where the metal meets the hair, as tight as you can get it down there because you don't want to have a big kind of stubby platform here and then your brush starts. You want to get it down as close as humanly possible. I also don't recommend using tweezers and pulling the hairs out because usually inside of this metal handle is um, basically there's a little bit of adhesive glue and then it also gets crimped, um, you know, basically pinched inside to hold the hairs. So if you're pulling them out, oftentimes you're going to end up pulling more hair than you want and you could also be dislodging the actual crimp or glue inside of the handle, okay? So you're just gonna basically cut it off, giving it a little haircut, one or two hairs at a time. And you can see there's a hair right there on my glove as I kind of clean that away. Now, instead of just going from one side and nipping, nipping, nipping until I'm happy with the width of this brush, what I'm gonna do is rotate the brush just a little bit, maybe like a quarter of a turn, and then I'm gonna nip a few more hairs out of the base. And just gently squeeze until you kind of separate a few. You'll see them kind of, see like how they kind of splay out like that. And then I can nip and then I can clean off a few of the hairs. Can you see how I just did a couple? There's one more right there stuck on there. Okay, so maybe two or three hairs at a time. And this does take a little bit of practice and if you need a magnifying glass or you need to wear, you know, some glasses or whatever, go for it because this is very, very teeny tiny. So again, I nip off and then I rotate the brush maybe like a quarter of a turn and I'm going to nip off a few more hairs. And you can literally keep doing this process until you're really happy with the thinness of the brush. You can do it until you have almost no hairs left if you want to. But I would suggest you do this very gradually and always rotate the brush because what we want to do is we want to keep this bristle collection, we want to keep it in a cylinder. We want it to stick together and we want to create a round cylinder of bristles. We don't want to create a big flat ribbon of hair. We want it to stay in a cone shape because we want everything to come to a point at the end of the brush, okay? So if we end up just trimming from one side, what we're going to do is we're basically going to flatten this brush and it's going to become kind of a flat ribbon instead of it being a nice cone. We want it to stay a cone shape. If you have a flat brush that you need to trim hairs, you can absolutely trim it from one side, but for striper brushes, detail brushes, we need it to stay in a cone. So just rotate ever so slightly, and I'm actually gonna trim this one down quite a bit. Okay, so just a little bit of time, gently squeeze at the base, remove those hairs. Okay, and then that's pretty dang good. Okay, so that's basically what it looks like. And see how it stays, just look at the base right now, don't worry about the hairs kind of sticking out at the top, because we're gonna fix that. But can you see how the base of it stays in a round shape? We don't have kind of this flat ribbon. So that's how we do it is we rotate the brush while we're trimming and you can continue to trim and trim and trim and trim, okay? So that's how we trim a brush. All right, how do we prep this brush for use? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of clear gel and let me just grab, doesn't really matter what gel you use. You just want it to be something that is, um, you don't want to use a gel polish that is like nail polish style. And what I mean by that is um, anything that kind of smells like nail polish or air dries, you don't want to put on your bristles um, long term because what it's going to do is it's going to air dry on your bristles and it's going to kind of glue them together. So you can see right here, let me zoom out just a little bit. I've got just a little bit of gel here in the lid of my jar. So this is just a little bit of base coat that I've got in here. And I'm just gonna kind of work a little bit of gel into these bristles. And again, you can see I'm kind of rotating and twisting very quickly. So what I do is I just kind of rotate the brush into the gel like this, kind of press and then pull and twist. And what this does is it really coats all the bristles with some gel and the twisting action is going to help my bristles stay in a nice twisty point okay so this is how we train our brush to stay in a point if you have any brushes that are just flared out all the bristles are sticking all over the place two ways to prevent that is one keep a very small amount of gel on your brush and do this nice working it in and then twisting motion it's just a teeny bit of gel, but what it, act, what it does is it kind of acts like 
a glue, and, and I hate using the word glue when I don't mean glue because I don't want you guys to get confused, but what I mean is it helps to kind of, like hairspray almost, like it kind of helps to keep all the hairs together in place. And actually, if you leave your brushes like this, it trains your brush to stay this way. So I always leave a little bit of, of gel on my brush. And then when I'm ready to put the cap back on, what I do is every cap usually has like a little kind of uh, some type of ring or something inside to keep it from smashing all the way to the top. So when I put my brush on, my, my cap on my brush, I always look where I'm putting my brush. So I don't want to bash it into the side like this. And if I do, I just need to kind of twist it and pull it one more time, get it into a nice point again before I put my cap on. So just be very cautious when you cap your brushes. That's probably the number one time I'm very, very careful is when I'm putting my cap back on, I like to make sure that it stops and I'm not smashing the bristles up here inside my cap. And also um, I'm very careful about making sure that I don't hit the sides of the cap when I put the brush inside, okay? So there's a brand new brush prepped and ready to go. Next, I'm gonna show you guys something else that usually happens. All right, this is a brush that I left sitting for a long time and I haven't used it. And also I think I might've let a student use this and it got a little bit smashed on here, okay? So if you can see right on the tip, let me see if I can zoom in just a tad more. Oh, that's as far as I can go. Okay, no big deal. Okay, can you guys see right on the tip how the hairs are kind of curling? Can you see that? They almost like hook to the side. So instead of them coming straight out, like little teeny, teeny, tiny hairs are kind of hooking over. That's very common when you accidentally smash your brush or the gel has been kind of sitting there for a really, really long time. It's almost like this is all fine and then the end gets kind of frayed. The other thing I wanted to point out is that any brush where the bristles don't really bounce back when they kind of flex slowly and they all kind of stick together, this is a brush that's been stuck in gel for a while. Okay, so how do we fix this? Because this is ultimately gonna happen to you at some point or another. So I never, hardly ever put cleanser on my brushes. No acetone, no cleanser, no nothing. I always just squeegee off the excess. I cleanse them by smushing some clear gel into them just like I showed you previously a few seconds ago. But once in a blue moon, you get buildup in your brush. Maybe it's been sitting there a really long time. Maybe you forget what the heck is on your brush. Maybe you forgot to clean it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of cleanser. Oh, well, I may need to zoom out just a teeny bit. My camera's gonna get mad at me. There we go, okay. So I have my gel cleanser in here and I'm just gonna pump a little bit up to the surface. And all I'm gonna do is just hold my, I like to kind of hold it where it's not soaking all the way up into the handle. Cause remember there's glue in here, it's crimped. I don't wanna get any unnecessary stuff up in there. So what I do is I hold it down in, into my cleanser and you'll see even the bristles start to relax. Can you see the bristles are starting to separate there? So because I have isopropyl alcohol and a teeny bit of acetone in here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna eat any of that gel residue that's stuck in my brush. Sometimes you'll even see color come out. There we go. And you can even see the color of the bristles is changing. All right, so let's zoom in again so I can show you this. There we go. All right, so now if I do that same thing, can you see how the bristles just bounce right back? That is what we want for when we paint. All right, we want springy, springy bristles like this that just flick back. Because if you don't do that and you try and do stripes or hand painted nail or whatever, what's gonna happen is if it's that slow pull like it was before, it's gonna kind of stick and it's gonna hold that shape and you're not gonna be able to do that. Can you see how the bristles are also separating there as well? See how they're, now they're separated and the color of the bristles is even lighter because now I got whatever was in there, I got it out, okay? So as soon, as soon as you do this step, you can trim a few random hairs if you need to, same thing, twisting action, pulling them out. I don't ever recommend trimming hairs off the top, like giving it a buzz cut. If you do need to trim hairs on the top, you always want to, and I usually do this with a magnifying glass so I can see the individual hairs, 
but you usually also want to trim them in a little bit in a cone. So what I would do is trim a little bit and twist so that ultimately my brush stays in a comb cone, but it's very difficult to trim the top without kind of messing it up. Don't ever just take and just chop off the top because it's going to be a flat, a flat square on the end and you're not going to get a very good, a very good nail art experience. Okay. So same thing. What I would do is just like my last brush, work some clear gel into this twist and pull and then put the cap back on. Or if I'm going to be using this right away, I still put a little bit of clear gel or if I'm using a, a color gel, um, I work that in and I'll show you guys uh, that in my next video. I'll save this one and show you guys how I, I start this one out after I've cleansed it and what I do to get started um, painting again. Okay, so there is how you can revive a brush. If also, sorry, I wanted to mention also, if you have a brush, which I don't, and I'm very sorry because I do, I'm one of those people where I take really good care of my brushes, so I don't have any like this. But if you do have a brush that really got kinked, uh, maybe it got smashed by the cap or maybe you put it in a bag and you forgot about it and like the tip got smashed and it's got kinks in it. Hot water also really works. So just get yourself a teacup or a hot, you know, a, a mug or something of basically almost boiling water, like straight out of the kettle and stick just the bristles. Again, don't do it all the way up to handle because you don't want to get any hot water up here where there's glue inside, but just the bristles, submerge the bristles. And it works just like washing your hair with hot water. It relaxes the hair. And this works particularly well on natural hair bristles. This is Kalinsky hair. You can also try it with synthetic, but synthetic, um, synthetic tends to crimp a little bit less, uh, but you can revive bent bristles with some hot water, okay? All right, and last but not least, here is the brush that I use regularly. So you can see how nice the point is compared to this one that I just cleansed. A little bit of gel on this guy will get you back to this, okay? And this is exactly what you want. Can you see that the tip does not curl at all? It doesn't hook at all. And all the bristles are perfectly in place. It's in a nice cylinder shape, okay? And everything is nice and straight. And also it's nice and springy. So if I just flick this a little bit, nice and springy action on here. This is exactly what I want for when I'm gonna start nail art. So I want the tip to be perfectly straight. You can see it looks like it's almost one single hair all the way out here and nice and springy, a little bit of gel still on there to hold those bristles together. And this is exactly what you wanna look for with your nail art brushes. So no matter what gel brush you get, whether it's an art brush, craft brush, or you buy an actual gel brush, you know, again, when you get into using real nice gel brushes, it's really important to know this stuff because you want to maintain your, your investment in those brushes. You don't want to ruin a $20 or a $30 brush, right? So it really doesn't matter what brand it is. I know a lot of people, they go, oh my gosh, I saw this brush that's like teeny, teeny, tiny. You can also just get whatever brush and trim it down. I do have my favorites and I will list them below of what my favorite detail brushes are. Um, but I'll go over that more in the next video where I show you guys how I actually paint the stripes and how I do hand painted nail art. And we're gonna get into a little bit more nail art stuff going forward because I know a lot of you are interested in it. And you all have been so patient with me over the last year about learning all of the gel fundamentals. So now I really wanna get into the fun stuff, which is nail art. So I will list my fave brushes down below just in case you do have to have the one that Liz likes. But I also encourage you to, if, you know, if you're just starting out, if you're a DIYer, there's nothing wrong with going to a local art store, getting a zero or a double zero brush and trimming it down just how I showed you guys. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in and uh, happy painting. Bye.